What up, crazy investors? Coming at you with a second episode about Robinhood Markets, ticker symbol H-O-O-D. But I'm going to do this one in the form of an episode because I want to update myself and you guys on the account just to keep everything a bit transparent. Plus, I want to record my feelings and my thoughts during the stage of the market's twists and turns so I can go back in history and look. It's part of my journaling process, part of part of my investing learning process. So I'm going to go into the account sitting at 143,500. A lot of you want to see like performances in these tabs, so I'm just going to click through it fast. 23.9% um, year over year, 52% year to date, all time 378%. Now, if you've been in, in with the channel for a long time, you'll know that these percentages is a bit BS because um, I've taken money in, I've put money in, taken money out, so they're not exactly what it should be. If I had to weight it, it'd probably be around 250%. Um, so that's over the course of five years. I started, started this investment um, program here in 2018, about August 28th, 2018. So, um, moving on. Account tab. Biggest... I'm sorry, $116,000 worth of stocks and options at the moment, 27000 in cash. I just had a few put options expire, so I got the cash returned back into my account. Um, we got total return, Apple with nine nine grand, equity 35000 at the moment, Main Street Capital, two grand profit, unrealized profits, forty five grand total investment. Robinhood Markets, this is the position I'm going to talk about. I'm sitting at 5000 total equity, negative $200 profit and loss. Realty income, negative 400 total equity, 30000 sorted by equity. It's called Main Street is the number one position now. Apple number two, Realty income number three. Those are my three core positions. And then Robinhood Markets is my new trading slash short-term investment position or medium or long-term. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, I'll give you some of the rationale as to why I'm invested in this company. But r realty income isn't that far down, by the way, if you include the dividends that I have been receiving over the time. So we'll go into the history for me to show you what's going on here. So if we go to the history tab and we search by dividends. Hello, website. Please help me, website. Website. Why is it doing this? There you go. Okay, if I sorted by dividends, I don't know what was wrong with this website. You'll see that just for the last four dividends, we're already surpassed, for the previous four months collecting dividends, we've already surpassed the negative $400 in equity value. So, um, you know, it's not really down that far if you consider the, the dividends. Okay. Now, let's talk about this Robinhood position. $5,000 so far. Average cost, $8.82. So $8.82. Current price, $8.49. What is going on? I have some very interesting figures, by the way. So, um, I want to do a little bit of a review of the company from that perspective. Now, last time I made a video, I highly suggest you check it out. But, basically, I did an overview of their numbers. I talked about their. Um, oh, I'm wearing hood in order in honor of Robin Hood. <laughs> I talked about um, their, you know, billions of dollars in cash. I've talked about their growing revenues. I've talked about you know their direction and their strategy. Um, there is a recent interview with with um, Tenef, the the CEO. I talked a little bit about that. I think it was on Yahoo Finance. Um, so I mentioned many, many things about the company. Um, I look at their assets versus liabilities, etc. But this one, I have some statistics that I want to share with you about the company that paints an even better picture, a more high definition picture of where the company's headed, what it's been doing, what's happened. So there's a little bit of a story um, with more color when it comes to 
this company. So we're going to start where we always start, which is with the price action. <laughs> so I'm going to pull out to the max and five years. Okay, so in 2021, the company experienced a boom. There's a big inflow of funds going in there, chasing speculative assets. And of course, it came crashing down in late 2021. Early 2022 was the beginning of a pretty massive correction slash bear market in tech and speculative asset areas, arenas in the financial world. So Robinhood was at the forefront of that because it acquired tons of brand new users that were chasing hot money. And now, in 2022, that bubble has kind of been deflated. So I'm here to try to pick up what's left of the pieces because I do believe that the platform is making some very interesting strategic changes in the way they're accruing, you know, revenue. I mean, er earnings. Um, and I said accrue because they're using interest to fill up some of those gaps. They are... Um, focusing more on interest or income, the differential between what they're given to their users and what they're collecting from the money markets count, etc. Plus, they have like three or four or five different interests, way, uh, ways to collect interest um, and add it on to their revenue streams. So, I think that the company has diversified their way of doing business. And what we're going to do next is try to understand in historical terms some of the money flow that has gone in and out of Robinhood over the past few years. So I found this website. It's called investinginTheWeb.com. It's a free website as far as I can tell. Um, and um, it has some pretty interesting figures for us to look at. So I'm going to browse through those and comment on them in order to try to paint a picture, give you my opinion of what's what's been happening while looking at the numbers. I'm going to read them out loud because the numbers could be kind of small, especially if you're using a phone. But on desktop, this should be a HD video, so you should be able to view it pretty clearly. So first, we're going to look at Robinhood AUMs. Now, what is AUM? Good question. Stands for Asset Under Management. Okay. Now, Asset Under, under Management is a kind of a loose term. Okay, it's normally used for, you know, money managers that actually have a kind of a direct or at least somewhat direct influence on where that money is going. So if they have a client or clients that have entrusted their capital to them, these money managers will be able to control it and allocate it the best way they see fit and then pay it out to the clients, etc. So there's different varying degrees as to how much control they have. Now, in this case, they're using AUM, I think, as total money that are sitting in Robinhood accounts that Robinhood touches, but don't, doesn't necessarily direct, if that makes any sense. So it basically shows us a chart or, or, or a table of the total amount of money that's been flowing through Robinhood, it sits on Robinhood accounts. In 2017, that number was $4.5 billion, which is not too shabby, but it doubled in 2018. So I first opened up Robinhood account about 2015. So I was one of the first people, but it only had a few hundred dollars in there and I didn't really touch it for a very long time. I started investing more seriously with the Robinhood account and made it public in 2018, when Robinhood had $8.3 billion or so of AUM. 2019, it doubled, almost doubled to $14.1 billion. And in 2020, continuing the exponential growth, it more than quadru it quintupled, okay, five times. Almost five, almost five times the amount of the previous year. So that's really, really high growth. And then, of course, it tapered off from 62 
from 63 billion dollars AUMs to 98. Okay, so really slowing down there, but still increasing quite a bit. In 2022, they actually decreased. AUM decreased. Now, that's mainly due to people's losses. Like, I don't know if many people just decided to take their accounts elsewhere and just ditch Robinhood and, and transfer their assets to a different broker. I don't think that's the case. It was probably just due to the reduced valuation of the assets that people were holding. This is in the middle of techno techno boom <laughs> in the middle of the tech bust techno boom what am i thinking uh the middle of the tech bust the middle of the crypto bust so because robin hood has had traditionally lots of aums in tech stocks and crypto stocks those dropped in value so the average account of robin hood dropped quite significantly for the commentary Robinhood quarterly assets under management. This just gives you a little bit of higher definition of uh, uh, of how the money flowed in there. So you see it peaked out somewhere in Q2 2021, and then it stayed around the 90 to 100 billion until Q2 of 2022 when it dropped down to 64 billion. It's been staying around that level ever since, all the way through Q4 2022 at 62 billion. So a very slow bleed here in the last three quarters of 2022 the big loss came in q1 to q2 okay robin hood users so this is a metric that people like to uh, quote and use when it comes to this specific company's growth this app <laughs> robin hood users in 2015 when i started was just half a million I was one of the first people, actually. I was in a waiting list to get into uh, Robinhood. So Robinhood users in 2016 doubled and then doubled again in 2017, almost doubled in 2018, and then again almost doubled in 2019. The, the figure on the right is the one that's quoted the most in media, which is the monthly active users, the MAU. Monthly active users in 2017 was 1.8, 3.3 in 2018, 4.3 in 2019, 11.7, so three times higher almost, in 2020. In 2021, it was 17.3 monthly active users. In 2022, it dropped, it lost some users, at least active ones, dropped down to 11.4. But 11.4 is still the level of 2020. It's not even 2019 level at 4.3. So if Robinhood monthly active users were to do to round about to pre-pandemic times to pre-2020, then it would have to drop to 4.3. And I don't know if we're ever gonna get there. We'll see. Furthermore, Robinhood yearly revenues. 2019. So this is basically the money that Robinhood um, takes in from whether it's their market operations, whether it's the order flow uh, revenues coming in, or Robinhood Gold subscriptions. Okay, so all the revenue streams combined, this is how much money is coming into the actual company, right? It's not the ones that other people control. It's the money that the company actually takes in and puts in their pocket before they have to pay their expenses, okay? So, in 2019, it was only $278 million of revenues. In 2020, $1 billion of revenue. 2021, $1.8 billion. And then decreased in 2022 to $1.4 billion. Now, if you were to go back to 2019 levels, this revenue number would have to drop to $278 million which I don't think necessarily is going to ever happen. Um, that revenue is way too low. Their, their users are way too high. And their AUMs, are, I don't know if they're going to be going down any, any further than this. We'll see. It might, may actually be pretty um, dependent on the way the market moves. Robinhood quarterly revenues. This is the same idea. Higher definition. The year broken down in four quarters to see the exact numbers. You can see clearly that the bubble here was Q1, Q2, and then Q3 really started falling off. 
So we went from five over five hundred million dollars per quarter in revenue to just over, you know, to three hundred and sixty um, million in Q three Q four two thousand twenty one, and then all the way down to three hundred Q one twenty twenty two, and then right back up. So it looks like that was the low Q one of two thousand twenty two was the lowest yearly. I'm sorry, uh, qu quarterly revenue for Robinhood, and then it increased. I think th it started increasing when the rates started going up and they implemented some programs that helped their customers keep the money in cash and then collect you know, some um, money market flow premium, skim some off the top there for, for their, from their users, which is actually a fair deal. Like it sounds bad, but it's actually not. It's everybody does this, all the brokerages. If you think that there are angel brokerages out there, and some brokerages are more evil than others, I think you're very mistaken. Like they all do the same stuff. They all get paid for order flow. They all charge money for interest. In fact, Robinhood is probably the least evil when it comes to that because it has the best money market rate out of all the other brokers. So in case you think that there's some evil corporation, like think twice, find me that, find me that angel of a broker that you're talking about. <laughs> I want to see him. I want to see this charitable broker that you're you're claiming that exists. So further. Okay, this one's interesting, right? Average revenue per user for Robinhood in 2017 it was only 37 bucks per user. 66 dollars per user average revenue per quarter. I mean, I'm sorry, per year. That year, the average revenue per per user, sixty five dollars. So it actually went down from two thousand eighteen to two thousand nineteen. Um, it went pretty far up in two thousand and twenty, all the way over a hundred. And two thousand twenty one was also over a hundred, and it round tripped in two thousand and twenty two to pre pandemic levels of mid sixties. So. Things have normalized when it comes to average revenue per user um, in Robinhood, and it probably will slowly grow from here. I mean, there's there might be some more downside to come um, in 2023, but uh, I'm betting that it actually starts growing from here for reasons that I may discuss in a little bit. Let's see what else these charts have to offer, these data sets. Robinhood yearly profit. Oh, it's a well known that this company is a growth company. It doesn't make profits. Not yet. In 2017, they lost $6.1 million. That's nothing. They grew though. And in 2018, they lost $57 million. 2019, they lost $106 million. So you can see this kind of like doubling pattern here. In 2020, they. Um, in they actually turned a little bit of a profit but that's not really their goal at the moment the goal is to try to steal market share and grow market share and get more AOM right in 2021 they lost 3.7 billion dollars almost which is interesting because that was one of their hottest years right but what happened was that Vlad hired a bunch of temp workers right in order to handle the growth of users the enormous growth of users that they experienced and also they were if you guys remember they were getting flack for not having good customer service so he had to hire, hire a bunch of people to help with all this customer service and all the you know regulatory stuff that they had to deal with so um it actually it was more growing pains than it was worth at the time even though they made tons of more revenue and they grew by quite a lot, they could not turn a profit um, that year, 2021. So very interesting. But as things come down and they become more efficient again, I'm betting, literally, that um, they're going to become profitable. And not just profitable, though they're going to continue to grow, um, for sure. Okay, net profit in... 2022, 1 billion. So they lost three times less than 2021. 
Robinhood net deposit by year. So this one's this one's interesting. Okay, so how many billion of dollars are deposited into Robinhood app um, per year? 2017 only 1.7 billion. 2018 4.6 billion. Okay, 2019 steady at 4.3 billion. 2020 many times higher almost eight times seven times seven times higher uh 31 billion 2021 it decreased already so most of the funding of robin hood accounts came in under 2020 and 2021 um but it was already decreasing in 2022 18.4 billion so decreased even further it probably not i mean it might round trip all the way back to 2019 levels but since inflation's here etc i i doubt that will happen but it could get under 10 i can see that happening net deposits i mean the, the user growth might not grow as fast anymore although they're making initiatives and they have learned a lot from the past however many years they have listed here so things may not round trip all the way back to pre-pandemic levels they might keep some of the advantages they they, they acquired um robin hood yearly average account size this one's kind of interesting um it round this one's already round trip back to 2019 it actually even is dipping below so the average size of a robin hood account is um i mean it's it was 2300 in 2017 um 2518 so 700 in 2019 so steady growth in 2020 increased to quite a bit to 5000 a little bit further down in 2021 at 4000 and it round tripped in 2022 to 2019 levels at 2700 for the average count so average means you take all the accounts money right so all the AUM and divided by the number of accounts okay so if we take the AUM so I might do some calculating here on the fly let's bring up the calculator so theoretically if we divide um, the AUM which is in 2022 it was 62 million 62 million divided by the average size so 62 million 1 2 3 1 2 3 divided by the average size of 2695 that gives us well that's that doesn't sound right twenty three thousand accounts huh is that right twenty three thousand times six nine five yeah okay twenty three thousand count i i would think it's it's higher than that no no it actually that's such wrong math oh my gosh i'm so dumb <laughs> that's not how i calculate it okay anyways but the average means you know all the uh aum okay divided by the number uh, of accounts but it doesn't work the other way around okay it just doesn't because you could have you could have like you know 1 billion accounts under $1,000 and then you have a few big accounts that was going to offset that. So I was basically calculating the mean, which totally doesn't make any sense. So ignore what I did here for, for the last like one minute. <laughs> um, but I, I don't do cuts. I just don't have time to edit it. So you just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. My bad. So here's the conclusion here. What they have started doing lately is they've been going into the long game okay robin has been going into the long game 
their advertising um, Roth matching or IRA matching of 1%, which nobody else does except employers. They've been, you know, um, doing this initiative to try to lock in capital under their, man, you know, into their AUM for a long period of time. And it's, it's going to be a much more sustainable base. And um, I think it's going to help basically their growth, the underlying kind of base growth of the company through that. Also, you know, once people you have people in their retirement account in there, you can offer them the rest of the Robinhood products so they can start monetizing that user base at some point if they wish to be monetized. Another plus I think that the, the company has is that everybody's already has, not everybody, but many people already have an open Robinhood account, even if it's got like $3 in it. And then maybe they have a bitter experience from the whole 2020 episode. But maybe a portion of those people come to their senses when they get a little bit older. And they're like, oh, well, you know what? It didn't turn out because I was dumb. I was following a bubble and I was buying speculative crap. And then it crashed down to nothing and now I lost all my money. But investing in general is not such a bad idea. I see the folly of my ways now. I'm a reformed investor. I'm going to go over there and get a brokerage account and start investing money again just differently. And so guess what? They already have a, an account open up in Robinhood. It doesn't, it takes a long time sometimes to open up a brokerage account with someone else. At least five minutes. You have to answer questions. You got to link your bank account. It's a pain. People like the way of least resistance. So they might just pop out the Robinhood account and start putting money in there in order to um, get back into investing because now they maybe they have a steady job, right? They're not reliant on steamy checks anymore. They can actually have earnings over many years. They can put away, they can set up their Robinhood account to auto deposit. They can set it up to reinvest. And so the wealth, the AUM is gonna grow from Robinhood. And um, I think it's gonna be very easy for people to get back into it. So I think the strategy is sound. I think they're positioned very well. I don't know how long I'm going to st stick to this position. I mean, I wish that I could stick it out for a very long time, but reality is I'm a little bit more of a trader than, than I want to be. Um, and I might get rid of it if it pops to like 11 or 12 or something like that. Dollars per share. But uh, I wish, I, I think that they're, they have a bright future. I think in five years, if we come back, Maybe I'll look at this video in five years and be like, oh, I predict this. I think Robinhood will be in a very good place. It's it's Right now, its market cap is about seven. Um, I'm thinking the market cap is going to be like 35 or 50 in five years. Um, so that's my prediction. But, you know, that's like three or four, that's like four or five X or more. But I don't think it's unrealistic. Um, it's a very good return to, for the rest of the markets. I think it will happen. I think they're adaptive. They've learned from their many mistakes. Yes, they've had very silly mistakes and very large mistakes. But as far as, you know, the reputation of Robin Hood, it's already in the toilet. So it can't get any further down, right? So uh, I think the journey for repairing the reputation of Robin Hood with the customers that have been burned is going to be slow and steady, but it's going to be... Um, it's going to be well earned and it's going to happen. All right. So that's, that's my prediction. Robin Hood, 50 million, I'm sorry, 50 billion market cap in five years. That's 2028. Mic drop.